What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nations, blogging the boys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and that your sports heart, just like mine, is full. The Masters wrapped up. Obviously, yesterday I'm putting this together for you on Monday, April the 15th. Happy tax day, I suppose. We've got the NBA playoffs effectively set. I know it's the play in, whatever. NHL playoffs on the way. My Boston Bruins. That's right, my Boston Bruins. This is our year, baby. We've also got, uh, what else? Uh, the Chevron is this week on the LPGA. We've got baseballs in the middle of action. I know that it is an unpopular thing for some of you that I'm a Houston Astros fan, so I apologize for the way the weekend series went. But hey, that's neither here nor there. We are here, actually, to discuss the Dallas Cowboys. Of course, the NFL draft is next week. It starts next Thursday, April the 25th. We will have videos for you here on the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel after each and every pick, breaking down what you need to know. So make sure to subscribe. Make sure to follow me. I'm RJ on Twitter or Instagram or threads at RJ Ochoa or on TikTok, RJ.Ochoa. You can send me an email if you would like, RJ.Ochoa at SBNation.com, or you can leave a comment right down below. We will do our best to get to those, obviously, because so many of you are wonderful and subscribe and comment and all that wonderful stuff. Anyway, so while the draft is a week and a half away, and we're going to be talking more about it, obviously, as we get closer and closer and closer, we are here today on Monday, April the 15th, to talk about something um, not pleasant, um, but something that is also not worthy of panic, but nevertheless, something that we have to discuss. So let's go ahead and get to it. Um, earlier today on Monday morning, it was reported that the Philadelphia Eagles negotiated an extension with wide receiver Devontae Smith, and we were all super jealous because the Dallas Cowboys do not have that forward-thinking element in their front office. And like 10 minutes after that, this came out. CeeDee Lamb, uh, not expected to attend voluntary off-season program activities for the Dallas Cowboys. He is obviously in the middle of contract negotiations with the team. The Cowboys' voluntary, that word is important here, voluntary off-season program began today. Today for me, it depends on when you're watching this video, on Monday, April the 15th. So if we look down here, this is the report from Adam Schefter. It should be noted, by the way, that this report originally emerged last week in the Dallas Morning News. But Adam saying, Cowboys wide receiver CeeDee Lamb isn't expected to attend the start of Dallas's voluntary offseason program Monday while he awaits a new contract to replace, and here's the propaganda, the one scheduled to pay him a fully guaranteed 17 point, let's round up $2 million for his upcoming fifth year option season. Very quickly, let me take that off the screen. It is propaganda because we all know that the fifth year option is fully guaranteed. That's not CD's fault. The Cowboys aren't doing CD some favor uh, by guaranteeing his fifth year option. That is the way standard rookie first round contracts work in the NFL. CD didn't even earn that. He, well, he did earn it, obviously, by going in the first round. That's what he's entitled to. And the Cowboys, by the way, agreed to pay him that this year in 2024 when they decided to exercise and pick up that fifth year option this time a year ago. But I digress. Let's get the article back up on the screen. Make sure to head to blogontheboys.com. I'll put a link to it in the bottom in the description for you. I wrote this, so I'm a little bit biased. But moving on, uh, I wrote this here. Part of the reason that panic should be avoided is we basically knew this was coming. And we talked about the report from the Dallas Morning News. Um, this has you know, shades of why would CD show up? In fact, if we scroll down here, Clarence Hill, the Fort Worth Star Telegram said, wide receiver CD Lamb is not participating in the Cowboys offseason program per a source with knowledge of the negotiations or lack thereof on a contract extension. Why would he is the exact quote. So that being said, why would CD Lamb show up? He has absolutely no incentive to show up to something that is voluntary. He is coming off of, and I have said this and used this verbiage because it matters, literally the greatest season that any Dallas Cowboys wide receiver has ever had in franchise history. I'm not saying that CD is the best wide receiver in team history as my dog bear barks in the background. The male is driving by. Hopefully they brought me something worthwhile to make up for him barking, but CD is coming off of the most statistically impressive, statistically objectively impressive season that any wide receiver has ever had in team history. You've got to pay him, Cowboys. You have to pay him. You cannot avoid it. And the more you avoid it, the longer you go, the more it is going to cost you in the long run. I mentioned it. We included it in this article because it's worthy of you know contributing to the discussion. This is a tweet from Ian Rappaport. The Devontae Smith deal that he got from the Philadelphia Eagles early on Monday morning. There were reports last Friday that this was on its way. This is the tweet. The Eagles have paid uh, another big-time rising player. This time, wide receiver Devontae Smith gets a three-year, $75 million contract extension that includes $51 million guaranteed sources say why is this important why does this matter why should i be mad about the eagles paying Devonte smith he's only getting 25 million a year on the extension he's not even as good as cd lamb that isn't a knock on Devonte smith very 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 few people are as good as cd lamb Devonte is awesome this is just about you know putting things in their proper place 
Why should we be mad though, RJ? Devontae Smith once again plays for the Eagles. You know, CD's going to make north of $30 million per year. He was never going to agree to that deal. That's all true. I'm not mad that CD Lamb did not get the offer that the Cowboys gave, or excuse me, that the Eagles gave to Devontae Smith. I'm very certain that the Cowboys would offer what the Eagles gave to Devontae Smith to CD Lamb. What I'm bothered by, if you do not remember the facts of everything involved here, CeeDee Lamb was a first-round draft pick of the Dallas Cowboys in 2020. Fast forward one year to the 2021 NFL Draft. The Dallas Cowboys held the 10th overall pick. We all thought they were going to take one of Patrick Sertan or J.C. Horn. They were wiped out at 8 and 9, respectively. That being said, the Cowboys were on the clock at 10. There were a lot of people who thought the Giants were going to take Devontae Smith at 11, one pick behind Dallas, and obviously Philadelphia was sitting right behind New York at 12. The Eagles, ring, 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 picked up the phone, called the Cowboys. They jumped up from 12 to 10. They took Devontae Smith. The Giants then, with their number one target off the board, they traded out, and they traded with the Chicago Bears, who took Justin Fields. He's now in Pittsburgh. So the Cowboys, who were at the 12th overall pick, which they got from Philadelphia, who they got from Miami, who they got from San Francisco, by the way, all in the Trey Lance trade, which is funny enough because Trey Lance is now a member of the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys took Micah Parsons, incidentally, out of Penn State, very nearby to the Philadelphia Eagles, of course. All right, now that I got off my tangent, Devontae Smith, a first-round draft pick in 2021. That means, like Micah Parsons, he is eligible for a contract extension for the first time in his career, having now fulfilled three years of NFL service. The Philadelphia Eagles understand, and I hate admitting this because I don't like anything Eagles, but the Philadelphia Eagles understand that the earlier you get to this, the better. The earlier you get to this, the sooner you get to this, the cheaper it will be. We live in a world that is Monday, April the 15th, 2024, as I mentioned, where CeeDee Lamb needs an extension, where Justin Jefferson, who did not report to his team's voluntary program with the Minnesota Vikings, he needs an extension. Jamar Chase of the Cincinnati Bengals, T. Higgins of the Cincinnati Bengals, Jalen Waddell of the Miami Dolphins, Brandon Ayuk of the San Francisco 49ers, the aforementioned 49 Niners, Amon Ross St. Brown of the Detroit Lions. You may not think that any of these receivers, even Justin Jefferson included, are better than CeeDee Lamb. Maybe you think that CeeDee is the best. Maybe you think he's the second best or the third best or whatever. I have breaking news for you. Their contracts are not going to be ranked or sorted by who is the best and that player gets the most. It is a law of supply and demand in the NFL, and you have to beat the market so that your price is low. We've talked about this already on the NFC East Mixtape, myself and Brandon Lee Gowden. The Eagles, before free agency began, paid Cam Jurgens. All right, why do they do that? Because as soon as free agency began, I keep banging on my desk here, and my orange soda is rattling. I don't have the lid on, so that's kind of dangerous. Um, as soon as the Eagles paid Cam Jurgens and free agency began, guess what happened? The guard market exploded. Howie Roseman understands he might be, in fact, he probably is overpaying for Devontae Smith, and he's overpaying in general because he's got so much money wrapped up in the wide receiver position because he's paying A.J. Brown as well. But guess what? A year from now, two years from now, when Jefferson, Chase, Waddle, Higgins, Lamb, all these players are paid, Devontae Smith is going to look like a bargain among bargains. He's going to be such a small percentage of the salary cap. It would have been nice. It would have been wonderful. It would have been a breath of fresh air if the Cowboys had gotten this done with CeeDee Lamb a year ago in anticipation of this. Would they have had to have overpaid at that time? Absolutely. But would their deal that they ultimately brokered with him look a lot more friendly than what it is ultimately going to look like? Duh. That is the way this works. We've had the same conversation relative to the quarterback position. The only thing that separates CD from Dak Prescott or Micah Parsons relative to their position in their respective market is that the quarterback and pass rusher markets have already really ballooned. Now, they will always continue to rise, but you look at the state of the wide receiver group and all the names that we've been talking about so far, there are so many who are due to get paid. So this is the one where it would make sense for the Cowboys to pounce and be early and be one of the first and do not let anybody else beat you because the more you do, the more that price is going to climb. And this is a problem with how the Cowboys ultimately handle business. It doesn't make sense because they drag their feet, they procrastinate, they always wind up paying more in the process, and then they complain about players not taking less and the pie and all that stuff. This is something that I thought ESPN's Todd Archer did a great job of outlining today on Monday, as you can see on your screen here. I'm just going to quickly read through all of this stuff right here. In fact, nothing appears imminent with any of the three players they want to sign, talking about Dak, CD, and Micah. In terms of importance, Prescott would seem to be the most pressing because they cannot use the franchise tag on him in 2025. The Cowboys can use the franchise tag on Lamb in 2025. They will have Parsons under the fifth-year option in 2025. A quick pause while I agree with this. 
on a macro level, the fact that the wide receiver market is in such a tenuous state with all these dominoes on the verge of falling, like my orange soda here on my desk, that does kind of stress me out and make me want to pay CD first. And if on network Exchange Slater did report about a month ago that CD would be the priority this offseason. But Todd's logic here is very fair. Let's move on in the article. And you should go read this at ESPN. Why does it matter? This is what something this is something that a lot of you, I think, need to hear and understand. This is coming from ESPN Todd Archer, one of the most plugged in insiders relative to the Dallas Cowboys. Why does it matter? The longer the Cowboys wait on deals, the more likely the cost increases. That can impact their ability to keep other players or add pieces in free agency. And extensions allow for roster continuity without the potential distraction of a holdout. They also take away the ill feelings of a player questioning how much the organization wants them. And it gives other players hope that they can sign long-term deals with the franchise. Instead, these talks seem to almost get to a point of no return causing unnecessary drama the next here next line is mine not todd's it also causes players to become overpaid now i want to be very clear here i am all for 100 all the way in for every player not just on the cowboys not just in the nfl not even just players every single person in whatever your walk of life walk of work is i'm all for you and everyone getting the bag get as much money as you possibly can i want that for you me whoever wherever i want that for all human beings all right that being said, people look at players like Demarcus Lawrence and say that he's overpaid because of sacks and dumb stuff like that. But you know why he's overpaid in in the like loosest sense of the word? Because the Cowboys placed the franchise tag on him twice. Because the Cowboys took him the distance and blinked first because they lost. Because they do not understand that if you overpay at the earliest possible time, like the Eagles are doing with Devontae Smith, the overall life of that deal will lend to that player being a huge value. Instead of you overpaying at the worst possible time, then over the life of that deal, it does look more like they're overpaid. It's not DeMarcus Lawrence's fault that that's how the Cowboys chose to go about this. It's not anybody's fault. It's just the way that the Cowboys decided to do this. So actually, it is the Cowboys' fault. All right. This is a huge problem. This is an infection that the Cowboys have within their front office that they do not want to do anything like this. And we haven't really gotten here yet. We haven't really heard a lot of Stephen Jones, Jerry Jones pie talk. I know that's kind of a trope around this time of year, but we are getting close and we are getting close to the Cowboys front office pitting these players against one another, saying that they should take less so the other can take more. It's not Dax or CDs or Micah's or whoever's fault that the Cowboys have to figure this out. And the Cowboys act like this is a good problem to have, and it is, but they pat themselves on the back for being able to draft these players and have all this success. Okay, great. We'll apply that same forward-thinking disposition to what you do with them when they're on your team. And the Cowboys also love to talk about how the reason they're not active in free agency is because they love to pay their own. You can make a very, very, very strong, excuse me, very strong argument that the three best players on the team are Micah Parsons, Dak Prescott, and CeeDee Lamb. Put them in whatever order you want. And the fact that they're still waiting to get paid is an indication that the Cowboys actually are not very good at this. They continue to take L after L after L after L relative to the contract negotiations with the most important players on their team. They overpay because they wait till the last minute. They drag their feet. They drag their players through the mud in the media, in the public, whatever the case may be. And then they're super concerned and super shocked. Like, how did this get like this? I have no understanding of why we're in this boat. Come on, everybody calm down. This was a completely and totally self-induced situation. And if you're going to pity the Cowboys, if you're going to feel like, oh, well, this really sucks. This is a really crummy situation. Let me remind you that this was 100% predictable. We knew all along that 2024 was the final year of Dak Prescott's extension that he signed with the team a few years ago. That 2024 was the final year of CeeDee Lamb's uh, rookie contract, his fifth-year option year, obviously. And that 2024 was the first year in which Micah Parsons was eligible for a contract extension himself. The Cowboys have known this for three years now, four years if you count CD. They have known this all along. That's over a thousand days worth of knowledge, and they have sat on their hands and done nothing about it. Here we are. I mentioned it's Monday, April the 15th, and none of these circumstances have been resolved. And you can't say it's because they've been busy signing free agents or doing this or doing that. What have you been doing? What do you have to show for your work? It's like when you're in college and you get an hour and a half to take a test. It's been an hour and there's nothing on the sheet. There's nothing to show for the work. All they have done is age. All they have done is tread water. They haven't accomplished anything significant. Oh, but the NFL draft is next week and that will distract us. Obviously, again, we will have you covered at Blog on the Boys throughout all the Blog on the Boys universe. But 
it's really frustrating because it doesn't have to be this way. Predictable problems are best taken care of as early as you possibly can. Hopefully the Cowboys understand this at some point in the next decade, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that front. My name is RJ Ochoa. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or threads at RJ Ochoa or on TikTok at RJ Dot Ochoa. You can also send me an email, rj.ochoa.espionation.com, if that is more your thing, or you can leave a comment down below. We will do our very best to get to those as well. Congratulations to me. I did not spill my orange soda, even though I lived on the edge and left the cap off. You know, that's just, just feeling brave today. So that's what I did. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. We'll see you next time, and I uh, love you all.